Everybody, welcome. This is the Gym Boss Podcast. I'm Jimmy Halley. I'm your host as always. And this is everything, obviously, marketing, sales, business development, mindset development, whatever you need to be able to grow your gym and your fitness business. And uh, before we go into anything, as always, go on over to iwantgymleads.com where I've recorded a quick little video for you. That's if you're looking to get your marketing done for you. Have a look at the video. If you like it, click the button and you can schedule a time to speak with me. But I've got a special guest today, which is making this one super exciting. Uh, his name is Mr. Darren Bruce, and I was introducing him real quick in a second. Mindset coach, but he's developed something called the Communication Code, which is specifically for athletes in, you know, in sports, but also in businesses as well, where they have teams. And so it applies in both ways to the individual for you if you're a business owner want him to be able to like maybe pick a few bits and pieces from what he's done to be able to implement that with your with your clients but also then how can you do it for your business and as a cool other secondary thing he's actually an ex-gym owner so we're going to be talking about stuff that he's done in the past to grow to make it really good but also i think what he wants to talk about as well is some of the mistakes that he's made in growing a gym and so make sure that you can avoid the same mistakes that he made so darren welcome man good to have you on the podcast thank you jimmy yeah, i appreciate you having me on I really um yeah really looking forward to provide some provide some value yeah thanks man um so tell fill us in for, let's go back to like your gym it was called emb strategies and it was in canberra wasn't it yes yep. yeah so yeah. tell us like when was it tell us about the, you know how, how it started how it grew and you know all the all the mistakes and stuff you made along the way yeah cool so it started uh when i was in the i was in the military as a physical training instructor so i'd been a personal trainer for on and off for about 10 years and then i joined the military to be a what they call a pti which is um you know you might think of picture the commando yelling at hundreds of people with just me out the front <laughs> but also you know we do prepare people to do like get qualified in self-defense courses, leadership training, abseiling, all these different things to improve their leadership skill before they get deployed. Um, but I, I wanted, I wanted to impact more people. And uh, so I started planning my business for a year in there and I, I, you know, an enlistment date in the military is four years. You sign up for four years. And so I set myself a goal on the date I finish, um, I'm going to start my business and um, yeah, like long story short, I, I started it uh, the same. It was like this five days before my, the end of my enlistment date, like I took some leave and finished a week before and started the business with 21 clients, two grand a week. And I was started in a freaking salsa dance studio, <laughs> sharing the space from a, from a friend um there's so many things that happened to to get me there and so many people that helped me but like i just i made it happen in that space and then i um found a place across the road within uh two to three months at like a rental space that had some old like duty. your own facility yeah my own facility yeah. yeah so um walked in just i don't know if you've ever experienced this but you just walk in and you see exactly how everything's going to be where everything's going to look like when you have a vision of something and walked in that place and went, yep, I know exactly what. I'm sure people listening uh, in all the other gym owners know exactly what you're talking about. When you first get the keys, open the door to that, yeah. to that warehouse or whatever you like, you could see the vision unfold for you right away. Well, yeah, I saw it before I actually knew we'd be allowed to go in. Cause there was this old guy who didn't want to leave who was using the space and literally dying. I, I had to check his pulse when I met him. I walked in. <laughs> Man, it was, it was concerning. So, yeah, so it moved in there, and then um, that's how it got started, and and had it for about two years, grew it, and I had a had a couple of coaches, one full time, one part time, and uh, scaled it. So I removed myself from the business. My fiance and I moved to the Gold Coast and had a team there. Um, Did and you have I, a gym on the Gold Coast as well? No, I was looking for a second one. And then, um, well, I mean, we can talk about this when we talk about mistakes more. Yeah. Uh, but um, I ended up, like, a couple months after we'd moved to the Gold Coast, I was looking for the second one. My coach wanted to start her own business. I went back to the gym to, um, well, I had to decide whether I wanted to rehire or close. I remember this because I remember yeah. you uh, posing a question in a private Facebook group uh, around this time. And this was a while ago now. But I remember yeah. you having to make the move 
back to Canberra to sort things out. Yeah, I wasn't. I, well, not I, officially I, moved, but like. Yeah, I just like I flew down to Sydney to see a client, and then I drove to Canberra and stayed with friends. But I wasn't. I didn't have to move back there. But yeah, I, I had to make a decision because the rent was about to actually. Gym owners might be able to relate to this because I'd rented it for two years and just coincidentally, there was another three weeks to go before I'd have to um, sign the lease again. So that would be another two years that I had to have the space. So it was, you know, quick decisions I had to make of, do I close it or rehire? I had this overqualified exercise physiologist who wanted to go into group training and strength and conditioning. And so I was like meeting with her. She's so excited. I was like, oh, what do I do? And yeah, we can talk about more, more about that. Yeah. So, well, man, let's, let's talk about all the mistakes you made because this is what I think I want to highlight most because yeah. there are probably some people listening that aren't quite at the stage of opening a gym or they're, you know, they're in the stages of looking at it or people that are, that are gym owners and, you know, that, that's just hear about all the bad stuff. That's the juicy stuff, the stuff sure. that people want to know. Yeah. Uh, I'll do my best to put it in some sort of like chronological. Little side note though, as well, guys. Uh, Darren, uh, we just talked about this just before we push record on this one. <laughs> Darren actually PT'd my mum in Canberra for a little while, like probably like ten years ago or something like that. It's crazy, small what a, world. What an honour. <laughs> <laughs> mum, if you're listening, uh, I've got the good-looking army guy on the on the. <laughs> <laughs> this is where um, he gets some of his his. Uh, uh, his enthusiasm and his charm. Yeah. All right. So let's go back. So don't, it doesn't even have to necessarily matter if it's in order or whatever, sure. but what's yeah. some of the biggest stuff that you like, Holy shit. If I just knew that I would never do that again. So too long a cancellation period. I had a 30 day cancellation period. Um, it really made, really made the people leaving, not all of them, but some of them feel uncomfortable about, about it. Um, there's an overarching mistake, which is why it's led me uh, becoming a communication code coach, which is where my focus was on um, at different times, profit before people or money okay. before people, like some actions were being taken um, from a, from, from putting the money first before the people just in the way it was designed um, and I discovered that was a, a lot, it was all about how I learn about money. You know, I got advice from all different mentors, but still it came back to what, like my beliefs and my learnings about money and even business, you know, I had a father who has been a, a self-employed carpenter for 40 years at the time who would sometimes have peaks and troughs in business where he'd have to go and get other work, et cetera. And, I hadn't, I hadn't really learned the behavior that learned how to maintain um, a business. So uh, those things coming together and that's sort of how I've got to the point where I am and, and the work that I've gotten into to learn that I was doing all the, taking all these actions, like putting the cancellation period in place, putting a contract in place, um, marketing sales, everything, but these things from the past that I'd learned how to do them uh, were impacting still. They're like getting in the way uh, and causing um, causing pain for you know my my clients um, and and even the results like getting the results and them getting being so focused on the results for them because it'd make the the gym look good. Yes, I still cared about them and for them getting the results, but when that sort of peaked its head forward, like that the results would be best for the business more so than the person first um i would be thinking from my perspective of what's an even better result for this person when that person might not be ready to get to that result so it just so you that makes sense like my most challenging clients and a hundred percent i guarantee everyone listening to this who's a personal trainer your most challenging client is representative of the part of you that you're not accepting yet like the I had a client who was getting stronger, she was fitter, healthier, but like there was weight that she hadn't lost for like a year. And because I was pushing that from my own perspective and the way I wanted it to happen was the reason that it wasn't happening for her. 
there was all like stress involved. Um, that's a coaching yeah. mistake I'm talking about, but it's also in the bigger picture, I could see the overarching way that it was damaging the business. But it's as all well. connected, right? So, yeah. you know, from the ground floor, from that initial, every single individual client interaction, all the way up to the big picture, you know, business stuff, it's all matters. And uh, yeah. so just so I got it right, the biggest thing is you would profit over the people. If you were to summarize yeah. it, that was the whole overarching thing. Yeah. And then some of the individual stuff, which I'd love to hear more of, like yeah. one thing was like, you were driving so hard on the, on, on the results, like got to lose weight, got to lose weight, get the transformation. I'm doing air quotes for people listening, get the quote unquote transformation. Um, that it was actually hindering the business. Yeah, and, and it might have not even been profit over people, to, but, it, but it's just how, like, what I knew about, like, how to help people. So the, one of the biggest things I've learned is that how good I am at what I do has nothing to do with um, how, much, how many people I help, that a person making a decision to uh, become a client because it's their perception of the value. I could be the best coach in the world, but if someone meets me and they don't perceive any value from the way I communicate or what I do, or maybe however they created that perception of from a friend told them, et cetera, but it doesn't matter how good I am. That matters after, yes, after the person makes the decision because then I can deliver the result that they want, right? Because I have that, that result. But the very first thing that happens every single time is the perception of value. So I was spending all of this time and energy and money on filming blogs, uh, going, this is how to do this exercise when that's what happens after, you know? So really the only thing that was growing my business, even though I was fucking exhausted and every waking minute I'm thinking about my business is oh, I'm going to teach, teach, teach more, but teach is what I get to do that I love to do. Um, but really what I needed to learn, what I must learn is how to communicate in a way in which someone perceives the value. And that comes from them realizing more like how do they get out of pain and realizing that they're in pain, that, that like every single day that goes by that, that pain doesn't stay away for two months until they decide they're going to make a decision in two months from now and go, okay, I'm going to do it then that's just a strategy they have. That's a linear strategy that goes every two months. That's when I'm going to make a decision to do something. So they just spend two months dying. They're literally, their body's dying because we're growing or dying every single day. So yes. they miss out on two months of growth, but just one, one question posed a specific way can make them aware that how much more it's affecting them or it's affecting others. And, and that's, going to contribute to them making a decision that overrides their usual unconscious conditioning of, Oh, I'm just going to wait two months. You know, that that's the right the time. Deferring the decision. Yeah. Yeah. The right time was yesterday. The next best time is, is now. Right now. Yeah. And we all know that as bit as the, on our side, but I think that's a really good key insight is like, it doesn't matter what you think, hmm. at least at the start before they employ you as their, coach their trainer or become a member at your gym or studio or whatever it is um it's about how you got to look through their lenses through their eyes and yeah. how does how do you look and what are you doing to like to make it yourself or quote unquote be the solution or be appealing to whatever it is that they're looking for because if you're not and it can come down to a simple fact that they just don't like your personality like sometimes it's just they don't like you so what not everyone's supposed to like you but um and I, this is like me now getting a little tactical uh yeah. about it can that can be in your marketing because you said you're doing marketing about doing education videos and like here's how you do a squat here's how you leg press here's how you whatever um and instead what do you think you should have been doing or what did you end up yeah. changing to well the whole business was built off two key things i learned how to do facebook ads i had mentors that did them first and then i learned how to do them and i was really good at what i did so people referred and tagged people on facebook and and that was what helped uh grow the gym so good good marketing skills from an ad perspective which was you know as 
as you do, Jimmy, that you know how to do that, that someone who's never seen your business before can see it once and you can fast track the process of them becoming a client, right? Um, FYI, guys, if I want gymleads.com, that's where you want to go if you want your ads done for you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, you know, I've seen the impacts of only being able to do that um, and how much more, well, fulfilling it is to be able to communicate effectively, um, authentically with the clients you want and how damaging it is to not be able to do that. So the, the tactic I would say is that it was about knowing myself, was knowing about what's important to me about the community I want to create and how do I ensure that not only social media audiences, other friends of clients, the clients, the members themselves all are aware of that, but how do they actually embody it? Because so many of us, you know, we feel better. We talk about, oh, I feel so much better. That's awesome. It's not a result until you've actually taken an action and there's a new thing, new experience in your physical reality. So what I would have done is had the values of the community I wanted to create on the, the wall. Love so, that. Values so, is uh, values and the vision of your business is such an under can be such an underrated thing. Uh, and I feel like if you have staff, your job every day is to then you don't have to sell the clients because hopefully you have people, you know, working for you, um, yeah. delivering the, the training. If you're in that scenario, your job is then to continually sell the staff on your vision and values to make sure that they're living that. And that's something that like, that's something that marketing can't fix. Like yes. marketing can help elevate. This is something I have to emphasize to cut in on what you're saying. Yeah. Marketing can help elevate and support an already existing solid business. Mm. It can also make a shitty business go into the ground a lot faster because you're just amplifying what's existing. Yes. So if we get you all the, all the great leads and we get you all the great applications and people wanting to come and train with you, but then you deliver dog shit, Mm. Well, you're just going to go backwards a lot faster. So, and that, and that all starts with what every business, not just gyms, but what every business should start with is having core solid values that you live and breathe by. And mate, I love that you brought that up because we, I don't talk about that enough on this. So yeah. I think that's it. I, I think it's key. It's absolutely key. And here's the other key thing. And this was, this comes back to a mistake even if I would have had my values up on the wall because they were naturally being created uh, because of the values I already had. But the, the communication code coaching I do now actually shows every single uh, successful business has and successful athlete, which are the two things that I, I focus on. Um, they've always shown to have the same three to five values in place. Oh, everyone's hanging now. This is juicy. What are they? Well, so I can tell you, uh, or the, I can tell you number one for an athlete and, and a business. Yeah. So business is a result. The, the number one value is always a result based value. So, well, actually I'll tell you three because I work with them. Um, I know the, I know the values for business, relationships so like personal communication relationships and, and athletes so athletes is be the best but this yep. is also why athletes do so well in business because when the value of winning is the most important value over being the best just think about all the times when you when you made a mistake or you had perceived failure it might be because you had the value of winning as the highest result based and that's an impossible result to always achieve right even michael jordan lost games right yeah. So when you're focused on being the best, your focus remains uh, clear, you're calm, even when you do lose. So that's what that. every athlete has always valued the most. That's the end result. Improvement, progression, it's growth mindset, yeah? Great book on that too, sidebar. Tim Grover, his, his personal trainer, his coach, was ultimately a mindset fucking athlete guru um, go get his book called Relentless. He talks about like he was trained all those guys back in the day and uh, he talks exactly about this concept. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, man. Continue. No, that's great. Yeah. It's a great book. And just, I want everyone to think about your values as like, think if you've got a GPS system in the car, 
your GPS system is your brain and the car is your, your body. So it's, it's directing you in different moves and it's also attached to your nervous system. So if you perceive any pain, you won't be as motivated to act on those values that you actually are important to you. So that's where we have procrastination happen, etc. So one of the things I do is, you know, we do instant values change in 20 minutes with coaching, make sure you, you don't have any limitations where you just focused on something that happened that was painful in relation to them. But, um, that's the athlete. And then the, well, the business is ultimately a result. It might be a financial result, but then you think of a pyramid that the, the values that go beneath if the number one value, the most important result based value is the top of the pyramid. It's like the smallest surface area. Yeah. yeah. But then, then they get the surface area gets larger as you go further down the pyramid. Those are all the values that support that result happening. So, um, you know, you've got, there must be contribution involved, whether it's a business or a relationship, very similar values as well, because a business is something you're parenting, just like we parent our, our kids. So contribution is the number one foundation of all supportive values to get results for relationship or business. Love that. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, so the contribution service, same thing. Yeah. Service, serve the customer client. Um, and finances must be in the top values. If someone doesn't, if someone's not, uh, receiving a lot of profit, uh, then finances, they won't language money finances. It's not in their top five values. It's not in their focus, their field of focus. We can change values in an instant. You just got to be aware that you actually have them and that what they are and that are the ones you have actually matching the person who's got the result you have. Are they actually matching? Cause yeah. Every time someone doesn't have a result and I do that values change process, we look at what they said was important and we look at what the person or business or anything that's got the result, they're different values. So we must change them. Um, yeah. Okay. So now I've got the question here. Um, you're a gym owner and before yeah. you said you wanted to put them on the wall, yeah. I wouldn't put financial things on the wall and so clients could see it. So okay, it's yeah different. The community values are different to the business values, right? Right. That's what I was hoping you were yeah. going to say something like that because you have your own personal, there's, there's a whole range of spectrum of values, I'm guessing, right? You have personal values, business values, yeah, whatever else, right? Okay. So you got to, you got to understand like, this is good for if, if you're a gym owner or your business owner, almost all of the people that you are serving are children in adult bodies. So, <laughs> so if, most people aren't aware that the negative emotions they're like physical residue within their body and they're, they're controlling a lot of their behavior, which is why they're getting results that they don't want. So I did this with a client yesterday, even though we're changing her values to ensure that she's 100% excited to um, communicate and meet um, she, you know, her, her number one result that she wants is to, to meet, a man who's the role model she never had, right? It's going to impact. It's already impacting her business because she's developing trust uh, with others. And all of a sudden, you know, getting her first client, she's, she's new on the Gold Coast. Um, but those values we spoke about putting in place, is what she's going to put in place for her kids in the house is the same thing you want to do in the community for your business. So they are relationship values as contribution first, and then it's fun. Cause trust is easiest when there's fun. Okay. I love that. I'm going to write that down. Trust is easiest when yeah. it's fun. Yeah. So remember, remember I said, so I'm, I'm coaching people in communication. So how we communicate is determined by who we, who we are being our identities. And we have so many, the three key identities uh, when we communicate in all relationships, professional, personal, uh, best friends, lovers, and parents. And they're like a tripod. If you take one of the legs away, the relationship will start to die. Yeah. So best friends is the one that's so challenged. It, it's so challenging for so many because, you know, we might not have had a, a role model of parents where we actually watched them having fun like best friends. So the trust is so easy, right? Because you can give any form of feedback to anyone when there's trust. So we have fun and feedback becomes easy, right? Whether it's with your clients and there's something that they need to change um, and just have a look at, you know, all the marketing that's so impactful. 
people are laughing. That's why comedians are so popular. Yeah, this the trust is easier. Everyone relaxes, start to laugh. Totally. Etc. Totally. Yep. Good humor is always that's always been something that uh, in a sales scenario as well is something that I've always relied upon because. I'm not technically the most skilled sales guy. So I figured if I can just get them to like me, <laughs> then, then yeah. at least we can break down the barriers and have a real conversation, you mm. know, and then see if it's going to be the right fit that way instead of having guards up because having a joke, that's the thing to get the barriers down quickest, right? And yes. Get to like the real person. I have good, two good points to, to raise for that, that that might just help anyone listening, especially if you're, you know, if you're a coach, you're going to naturally have, had to learn a lot to be able to to get a result when you're always thinking about and literally thinking instead of feeling what result can i get people don't care that as much about that but if you make it fun then it's you're going to get you're going to get more people to actually get that result with like i remember doing one video where we all got everyone to do the what is it? The da, 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 like, like oh, kicking yeah. your legs out all together. We like all that, the can can the can can. Yeah, we had we had ten. So we used to do um, partner up strength and conditioning. You'd be like a maximum of ten people, two people on each of the five stations. We finished the session, still cranking the music, and everyone put their hands on hips, and we did that. I remember someone messaging the page that day, going, "Hey, can I start?" <laughs> after <laughs> after seeing that video. And I think back and I think, man, of all the blogs I posted, no response, no comments. And then I put this stupid video on of us having fun. And now I understand how that value is so supportive, that contribution supports fun because uh, people want to give back. Fun supports, um, uh, let me think about the, off the top of my head. Uh, fun supports trust. That's it. Fun supports trust and then trust supports passion. Cool. So passion's the same as unconditional love. So that's why I'm doing this with my client for her, her kids. They see that on the wall and then we can turn the values into actions as well. So if we think passion, we can say like, um, always do what you love, make that an action. So it's actionable. It's not just a word there. So that's what I would have done in the community as well. Always, always do what inspires you. And then in, for contribution, we might say always share what inspires you. Oh, yeah. That, because that was one of the things that naturally happened in my community where everyone would share recipes. This tasted great. It was low in calories. And we had five people come off antidepressants, tell me that they stopped taking them um, because some of these values were there, right? It was just, you know, people breaking down tears, hugging each other when they're in the gym because they lost weight or um, lifted weights. And they just, they felt good. They felt like a, it was a really trusting, safe place. And we know that, the number one determinant of health is community. Number seven is is nutrition or or food. Yeah, it's, commu- it's so true, right? Yeah. So the number one thing you'd probably <clears throat> I'm probably putting words in your mouth, but I think to make it really simple is the first thing you would focus on is community. Yes. You'd do that, but then you'd focus on that first over results for you know physical losing 10 20 30 kilos whatever it is um because all that stuff will happen as long as the community is strong and they're living by the values that you that you've got there at least for while they're in your four walls of the gym yeah contribution fun trust and passion is what i would make the the key four values for any relationship those four will create trust connection which I always say connection breeds excellence. That's ultimately what I'm teaching anyone to do is to connect and excel with uh, the way in which they communicate, which then means that you're not only relying on Facebook ads, which is awesome. You know, I use them and and you use them fantastically. We can't just have that as the the one source of, um, uh, revenue from that skill set because of course yeah you need you can't rely on one of anything yeah you need to have a multi-pronged approach you know or otherwise i like to always call it like the um the analogy of of a of a of a coffee table mm. you have the four legs and just say so you whip out one of the legs it's a bit rocky 
yes. whip out another one, then it falls over. And that tabletop is your business. Or I used to say that all the same thing with like your client's results. So that's why you always have to have, you know, multiple things supporting what you're doing because you can't rely on just one. Mm. Um, yep. So to go back, it was contribution, fun, trust, passion. And yes. then you said um, connection breeds excellence. Yes. So that's cool. Like that happens on both sides of this, I think from the business or the gym or the personal trainer to the client, but also for the gym owner with a team that connection breeds excellence is, is paramount as well. Because if you have a team that are in conflict, then that's the, <laughs> the fastest way to uh, have a stressful day. Yes. And here's a very, very important point. Trust comes first before connection. So trust breeds connection, which breeds excellence. The supportive structure, trust would be at the bottom. Connection would be on top of that. Excelling excellence is above that. Because trust is trust is rapport. Someone's relaxed. They feel safe. Then they connect. They only connect after that. And that's a very common mistake I see with clients is that they have been trying to connect with people and they're super happy and they don't realize that something they they did or said created distrust or just not enough rapport yet with someone, whether it's online or in person, that then they think to themselves, oh, why why did that did that person react that way? It was because they're not aware of how they're creating uh, distrust and someone feeling unsafe by their, their actions, which is why communication is everything. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. This has been awesome. I've been scribbling heaps of notes. There's been lots of good stuff there, but um, so that's where you would to just sort of tie this in a nice, neat little bow. Yeah. More focusing on like all this stuff that we spoke about first: the values, having the trust, you know, as the base first, then the connection, then in excelling. So in that sort of layer from the ground up, yes. um, and. Uh, talking about obviously the values, you know, obviously if you can change your values then you can change the trajectory of where you're going. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, um, sorry, you go. No, you go. What were you going to say? <laughs> and so that would be like mistake number one for your business. The yep. big or the overarching thing, probably the whole thing was not having these values and living by those first and foremost. And yep. what else would you say attribute that was some mistakes you made along the way? Well, See, at times the values went really well. It was me not realizing that focus always determines action. I can, if my focus is not where I want it to be, I could, I took so many actions that cost me so much time, money, energy, relationships, broken with people leaving because my focus was on, okay, I can see the money going down. What have I got to do, right? But, and this is such a great example that uh, when I did that, the money kept going down no matter what I did. At the time that I had a full gym, we couldn't fit any more people. We had 52 people in our five to six classes of, of 10 people max. $20,000 a month gross. Um, I had just proposed to my girlfriend in Hawaii. My coach was taking the classes for the week while I was away. I flew back. I was, I was like, the gym is full. This is amazing. It is no coincidence to me that I felt so much love connection to the community as, uh, because, as well as because where my focus was that I just was about to spend the rest of my life with my, my girlfriend, right? Like she said, yes, she landed after me from an airplane uh, skydiving, I had the sign ready saying, will you marry me from the woman that was helping out skydiving? Amazing. It was fucking awesome. I love Hawaii. So good. If you ever get a chance to go to Kauai, it's amazing. Um, but I came back, everyone was just so happy and results were great. Everyone was training. I wasn't pushing, just sort of saying before, my perception of what the results should be. Someone looking 12% body fat as well as being strong. Like that was my perception of how I want them to be, but not where they were at yet on their journey. You know, they still felt amazing and were still getting some results. But I was because I was discard, discarding my own results, I and and not like appreciating my accomplishments. I was just pushing their accomplishments to the side as well because it wasn't the way in which I wanted to see it. Right? Yeah. 
and this is all once again like my learned behavior of, of how i how i i do everything realizing that i was like i was acting as if i am my body at these different times where i have to look this certain way to really feel that connection etc and then that was projected out to other people but until i could realize that i was doing that then no amount of action could change that so then going to where my you know where my focus was on the money like i said like it was just every action i took just wasn't getting any result and i'm like what's happening here and talking to my mentors and and that didn't change anything so it, how you feel is most important first it's the same as like trust breeding connection uh feeling breeds results you've got to feel good first you can't do anything from um feeling like you've got this perception of I'm losing. There's a lack of everything because that's only a perception specifically. It's like when someone says they had a bad day, that's something that they perceived happened that was bad in one minute. The rest of the day, there's things that happens that you're cultivating momentum. You just got to find with that focus. And there's little tools that I have for that as well. that can shift your focus in an instant because the actions are just there's so much wasted time, money and energy without realizing that catching yourself and I still do it. Oh shit! I I feel I feel like there's something lacking and losing. It's it's just because like we have so much unconscious conditioning to look for what's what's missing when we always have like we always have resources available to us. Yeah, mm, so true. And uh, that's you've said a word that's been sort of my uh, it's been my for lack of a better my word of the year is focus. Yeah, it's cool. like people have heard the quote, you know, whatever you focus on, it magnifies or, you know, amplifies. And there's more deeper scientific stuff to that as well, like how the brain works, which you would know a lot better than me. But I know from personal experience, and I know probably you guys listen in as well, if you focus on, holy shit, I'm having a bad day, as you said, like this thing. And then you're like, see, another thing. You're looking for reasons to justify why you think you're having a bad day when you could have had 10 cool small little things happen, but you had that one, one thing you're like, there it is. There's the proof that that's why I'm having a bad day. And if you then uh, shift it and it sort of goes into this other thing as well, like what you talk, which didn't really talk about, but it's, it's gratitude. It's the gratitude for like, okay, cool. This is what I've got. I'm happy. I've got all this stuff. And that sort of can help turn around if you're having like a sort of a bad day. I definitely know that helps. It doesn't usually help right away, especially if you're not used to doing it. Like it takes a bit of practice to get it. Like if, for me, it's just a journal at the end of the day, three, three things, but I write it, but then I really read it again, think it, feel it. And I'm like, Oh yeah, man, like life's good. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, here's two important points I want to make. The difference between appreciation and gratitude is when you're talking about gratitude, it's almost as if you're noticing all the things that are external of you. So I say that the perception of luck, when someone perceives luck, there has been an unconscious decision to uh, deny all one's own accomplishments. Because when I focus on appreciation, and this is like my focus to feel better, like you said, I'm focusing on what I did that made me feel good. And that is where the unique resources ideas come to me that are congruent with me so then i stay aligned with those values the gps system that i then um the people who hear the words that i say and are aligned with those values will you know they'll be naturally i don't like using the word attracted but they'll just resonate right because yeah. what's community it's unity of communication so we have that unity of communication with each other yeah so that's why I don't, and full respect to you, like it's gratitude. I think gratitude is fantastic. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying that appreciation is something that's more internal because then like people aren't learning from like what we say to them more than they're learning from observe, observing us, right? Of, of what's our unconscious behavior. If I feel so full of appreciation, this good feeling, and I'm noticing all the things that I'm accomplishing, then my clients and everyone are observing me really appreciating my accomplishments. They do the same thing and then they loosen up. Things become easier. They, they enjoy the journey to getting the result. They have easier, they have more trust with you, etc. So that's one thing. And then I just want to say the other thing um, 
that we were just you were just talking about how uh, if you think about right now, if you've got a business, you listen to this, that the empathetic um, perception of someone like understanding all your clients or your audience, they have wants. We know about wants and needs in marketing. Yeah, probably everyone does. Like the, the empathy to them is their want and you know that they need something else, right? It's like someone saying, I went on a juice detox diet because I knew that I'd get the result, right? And you know that they need to learn about nutrition or whatever it is. The same, that version of that is that you want to take the action to get the results. You need to focus on how you feel first. Does that make right. sense? Yeah, hundred percent. So that's, that would be the number one thing that I would, it's the biggest mistake I made because it always came back to what I was focused on first before the actions I took. If I focused on what really feels like me, like right now I'm talking to you, I feel like me. Yeah. Like I appreciate, I, I feel appreciation not only for you, but for me as well. And this like natural uh, experience and conversation. Um, I feel really good. So therefore like all of my actions are going to be congruent. I'm not going to create anything that's going to feel crappy for someone else or, or for me. You know what I mean? Love that. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. I like that. So again, it's like the, the GPS system, as you said, I like that analogy as well because yeah. everyone knows how a GPS works. You punch in the coordinates and bang, you get, you get to where you want to get to. And that's the same as like inside your brain, do, 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 punch the yeah. coordinates in terms of values and you know what you're appreciating and everything else that we spoke about today. And then that's going to, you know, you're going to then follow that as like, kind of like your map, right? And that's going to sort of get you there for lack of a better analogy. But what I'm saying is, yeah. And I said that because yes, I do a process, you know, I can ask you specific questions, what's important to you. And we find out what the values are. And then we find, you know, examples of three people or businesses that have that result. What are their values? We can map that. But what you can do that's so powerful without doing all that is just, focus on appreciation you feel really good notice all your accomplishments and then you're in flow with yourself and you'll act on your values because you're connected to yourself you trust yourself you connect to yourself so that will fast track everything love it if you do that now appreciate all your accomplishments the smallest things then you're going to feel really good and then act from there like i feel so good right now talking to you man like even better since we started (laughs) i appreciate i appreciate this experience like it wouldn't have it would have, I can't do this on my own. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> of course. Otherwise you just uh, like me, most of the times a weirdo talking into a microphone by yourself. <laughs> but yeah. look, we, we are running out of time. I do have, uh, I do have to shoot in a minute, but just to hit on what you spoke about there, which is uh, massive. Um, people should do this quite regularly. I, I used to do it weekly. Now I don't do it so much, but this has actually been really beneficial for me. So thank you uh, sure. because I'm going to start doing this weekly is appreciating the com- accomplishments where you always look back in the past and you, it's kind of like, I used to talk about it in, uh, in other podcasts, like tracking your wins. Like, yep. what did you do that was good this week? What did you do that was that this week? And then use those wins as to like confidence to move forward in the week ahead. And mm-hmm. that's, uh, and people, good time of the end of the year. People do it at the end of the year. Don't wait till the end of the year. You could do it daily. You can do it weekly. Like I found daily was quite good, but also weekly was great for when I was doing my Sunday sort of planning and getting ready for the week ahead. I was like, Oh, okay. All that stuff was awesome. Okay. Here's me to get, that's what gives you motivation. I think that's what gives you drive and energy to, to move forward. Cause if you look at all the bad shit, you just like, well, what the fuck, man, what am I doing? Um, but so I love that. And that's a great reminder for me. So thank you. And everyone else listening, you should, you should jump on that because it's powerful once you start using it. Um, all right, so this is where we get to the last couple of questions. Um, this is just fun little like rapid fire round. I'm just going to fire off like, I think it's like four or five questions here. And then uh, then we can find out where people can go find out more about you. Actually, tell us first, where can people find out more about you? They can go to darrenbruce.com.au, D-A-R-R-E-N-B-R-U-C-E. Or uh, my Instagram's Darren J. Bruce or Darren Bruce on Facebook. Beautiful, darrenbruce.com.au. Um, all right, here we go. What is one thing you can't live without? Oh man, the first thing I thought about was my sausage dog. <laughs> <laughs> Done. What's your favorite book? Well, it's going to kill me. I didn't even say my daughter. <laughs> uh, my favorite book? Yeah. 
can be business, can be fun, can be whatever. Uh, the Warrior of Light by Paolo Coelho. Ooh, nice. Or the, or the Alchemist. Oh, again, a classic. The Alchemist yeah. is a classic. Um, favorite TV series? I just watched This Is Us and cried like a baby a lot. How? Oh, man. Uh, water works for me too. Oh, man. It was just... That's, there's so much, so many lessons in marketing and empathy there. You have like, the, they put the three, um, they put the three most key like cultural misunderstandings. It's like race, the black guy, the dude that's the high achiever, but he's still like, doesn't have appreciation. Yeah. And then the overweight girl, because she's getting so much pressure from the, the mothers wanting her to change. And that's exactly what I was doing with my clients. Oh <laughs> what man. Are they ready? <laughs> so this is us. Great TV series. If you haven't watched that, it's definitely a tearjerker. That's for sure. Um, yeah. What's well, something people don't know about you? Not many people. Um, I was like, I didn't fit in at school. I like hung around with people just because I wanted someone to like me. I was a tiny dude. And then I got like, I put like 20 kilos on in, in a year when I went to grade 11, I got like picked on or like, people punch me and stuff in school and then just everyone left me alone once I got bigger, like grew my body and also like muscles and strength from, from sport. So, so I, moral of the story, get massive. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think people look at me now and they don't know that I was just a tiny little kid. So yeah, if you don't know Darren, he's in, he's in good shape guys. If you check out his Instagram, he's in good nick. And uh favorite dad joke. <laughs> uh, a rabbit's uh, hopping along in the woods and a bear jumps out from behind a bush in front of him and goes, hey, I'm curious. I've got a quick question for you. The rabbit goes, okay, what? And he goes, oh, do you find that shit sticks to your fur? And the rabbit says, no, why is that? And he goes, oh, good. And he picks him up and he wipes his ass with the, <laughs> the rabbit. He just took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, and on that note, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. I love that. Thank you so much for your time today, man. I really appreciate it. Um, go so for Darren, darrenbruce.com.au if you want to find out more about him. And as always, if you want to know more about what I do, go on over to iwantgymleads.com. Uh, Darren, thank you so much, my man. And everyone, have a good day. You're welcome. Thank you, Jimmy.